Are we live? Here we are. We're live. The whole Hello. live thing come up. So there it is. We're live. But officially, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Women in Puppetry interview series thing, whatever this is. And um, <laughs> today we have the lovely Rachel Herrick. Hi, Rachel. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing. Fantastic. And by fantastic, I mean life is all over the place, but it's okay. <laughs> it's the holiday season. What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's craziness. Um, um, for people who don't know, uh, Rachel Herrick is a Los Angeles-based puppeteer and actress, right? Correct? Yes. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, and I, I get voice actress is the term I prefer to use because I'm more in the voice department of any kind of performing. But yes, voice actor, voice actress, sure. Right. Awesome. Um, uh, so, and, and you do all kinds of cool stuff, like really cool things. Um, uh, you have a YouTube channel and um, you work for uh, Swazzle, right? Is that how you say it? Swazzle? Yeah, okay. yeah, Swazzle. Okay. Um, can you what what can you tell us about uh, working for? Let's, let's start with working for Swazzle. Like, what what is that? What do you do? <laughs> uh, well, Swazzle is a puppet company in LA. Um, their primary focus is building puppets, uh, basically for anyone who will hire them or wants a puppet built. Um, I came into contact with the Johnson brothers, Sean and Patrick Johnson. Um, about four years ago, I think, um, when they were doing a fundraiser at their shop and we just got to talking and I said I was interested in puppeteering and this was when I was like a nobody in the puppetry world. And long story short, I auditioned for them and then a couple months later they asked if I wanted to come perform with them, or for them, excuse me, for the uh, summer shows that they do. Because they do a lot of summer shows like with the library programs in Southern California. And at the time, like being such a young, naive puppeteer, I was like, yes! So. It was really awesome to get paid to puppeteer, but basically what we do is we put on these one person shows um, that uh, I go around and perform all throughout Southern California. And it's become a much more collaborative uh, thing in the last couple of years, because before it was like, okay, we have a script and you're gonna do all the voices and go. Now it's like we get together and we talk about the story and then we actually record everything, we pre-record everything, so now we can actually do sound effects and I edit the tracks myself. And then we get off the ground and there it goes. So that's what I do with Swazzle. And um, it's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, what's been great about it more than anything is that it's given me a chance to not only get paid to puppeteer and to do what I like doing, but also it's great practice. Like when you're puppeteering almost every day, especially during the summer, it's, you know, again, it gives you a chance to actually work on your skills. So that's what I do with those guys. Yeah, it's a pretty awesome gig. That is, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Sounds like a ton of fun. Yeah, practicing um, is extremely important. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I, I realized uh, last month how much I haven't been practicing, and I was like, oh, man. I gotta get back <laughs> yeah, you got to You gotta work on your skills or else you lose it, and also practicing, you know, yeah. I don't want. I don't really like the term "practice makes perfect," but practice certainly makes you better. You know. Yeah. So definitely. definitely, for anyone out there who wants to be a puppeteer or be a professional, anything, practice, <laughs> practice, and make do. If you if you think you're a professional, great. Keep getting better. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that like? I mean, I hear almost every artist are like, you, know, you never stop actually learning any of it. It's all you just you keep learning more all the time. <laughs> Keep learning, keep working hard. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I think any even famous people out there who are like clearly have, you know, their careers made, it's like they're still working to enhance themselves and to make themselves better. So I, I, I tell that to everybody. If you want to be a professional, just keep practicing. Yeah, yeah. Um and you have uh, a YouTube channel. Yes, I do. What is it called? I love the name of it. It's called Adorkable Rachel because yeah, I, I chose that word because A, I love Zoe Deschanel, who's like the most adorable person on the planet. But I also 
call it that because people either always say like, Rachel, you're such a dork or Rachel, you are adorable. So I was like, okay, there's a word for that. <laughs> adorable. <laughs> and it sounds like it, it rhymes with Rachel. So it kind of, it has a nice ring to it. I love it. I love yeah. it. It's so great. Thanks. It, 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 um, it's, it's descriptive and cute all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, and and you you do movie reviews. You do um, what what else do you do besides movie reviews? You well, um, I actually well since we're talking puppets, I did do a video a couple months ago that I'm very proud of called um, "Things People Say to Puppeteers." Yes, and I love that video. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, um, I was really happy because it actually got passed around the puppetry community a bit, and like everyone was saying, like, "Oh my god, this is like the most accurate thing ever." And it was a video that I did. It's basically just me on camera in several different locations saying all these different lines. But before I made the video, I like went to the internet and like asked puppet communities and friends. I was like, what are some things that you get quite often as a puppeteer from people who are not familiar? And also just tell me anything unusual you've ever gotten. So it's a combination of very common things because as a puppeteer and being a puppeteer for a long time, there's a lot of common comments and questions that I get. But then it's interesting to hear other people's experiences. So I put it all into one video and it just magic happened. It turned out better than I had hoped it would. And uh, I just felt like it needed to be said, like, y you know what, we puppeteers, you know, I don't want to say we have it hard, but we certainly... I think are underestimated or, or what's the right word I'm looking for. We're certainly um, unappreciated, I think in a lot of ways, like it, but I, I did it kind of in a poking or fun at ourselves kind of way. Um, yeah. So I'm not, <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, lately it's been a lot of movie reviews cause I love movies and I love talking about movies. And um, I originally started doing the channel uh, to do reviews of the Muppet films cause um, because I love watching people and listening to people's opinions about movies and about different kinds of content, but no one out there was really talking about the Muppets. And I was like, what is this blasphemy? Where are the people out there talking about the Muppet movies? So I was like, this is never really, no one's really gone into big details about these movies. I'm going to do it. So that's what I did. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, I just really enjoyed it. And a couple months ago, I was like, you know what? This is something I want to try to do, you know, reg on a regular basis. So I just, I've started doing movies that have been interesting to me and I still am trying to do what are called Muppet Mondays. I tried to do that a weekly thing for a while and that got to be too much. So now it's like a once a month kind of deal, usually at the beginning of the month where we take a Monday, you know, during the week and we put out an episode where I talk about something Muppet related. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard work and sometimes it tests my patience a little bit, but it's just one of those things where even if I'm not getting paid much to do it right now, it's a good creative outlet. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm enjoying it. I'm hoping to get to share more and to hopefully get more subscribers and we'll see where it goes. But so far I'm having a blast doing it. Fun. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah um, I, I can relate to that a little bit where it's like um, trying to do something consistently and trying to figure out the time frame, like how often am I going to do this? You yeah. Know? Yeah, like you were saying, doing it every week was just too much. And I was like, yeah, that when I was first looking into doing this, I was like, I need to find like a set time, consistent time to do this. And I, I totally. can't do it every week. So <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's one thing right now for me trying to do at least one video a week, which is a lot of time on its own, but also just in general, like I wanted to talk about Muppets, but I wanted to talk about other things. So it got to, I realized it's hard to talk about both Muppets and other things and make that consistent. So I was like, okay, we need to kind of spread things out a little bit here. So yeah. you know, it's one thing of course to write something or like post a blog, but it's another thing to like watch a movie, then write your opinion on it, then film it, then edit it. It's like, <laughs> it's a lot of hours, you know? Yeah. And yeah. again, it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot when you're trying to be consistent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I understand that. Uh, awesome. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, oh my goodness. Yes. What? what? You had, you had, <laughs> <laughs> you had exciting all of a sudden. Yes. 
<laughs> you had a cool um, puppet adventure. Um, you you went to a famous street. Did you go to a famous street? Yes, I did. Yeah. I went to a, a place. I've been. To, yes, yes. Um, you're talking about my October workshop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that was actually the second time I've done a workshop with Sesame Street. Um, I did one with them, I think, February 2014, if I'm not incorrect, which was also awesome. Um, right. Yeah, it was really cool because um, it was um, originally for the, fe the one that was two years ago, we had to audition for that one. Like they had a certain mm -hmm. set of guidelines. They asked us to submit a video and I did and I got in, which was awesome. Um, did the workshop, had a great time, learned a lot, and then this time around it was kind of more of a, in, er, people who went to it were just kind of invited back, because um, I think they wanted to see, like, some of us, like, where we've been, what we've been up to, that kind of thing, so, um, yeah, so I went back and I just kind of went into it thinking, like, well, I don't know where I stand as a puppeteer at this moment, but I'm just going to go in and just do my best, and I, long story short, I feel like I ended up learning a lot more than I thought I would, and I also felt like I made a better impression than I thought I would. So it was it was great. Um, it was led by Matt Vogel, Marty Robinson, and Peter Lentz, um, same guys who did it last time, and they're all wonderful teachers and very patient people, as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. We didn't actually do it um, on the Sesame Street set, because I have visited the Sesame Street set. I did that two years ago, too, um, which was awesome. I got to take my sister with me. Um, but this was actually at their corporate offices, which is in Manhattan, because they film out in Astoria, different place. Right. And um, But yeah, it was um, it was great to see some familiar faces again, and some people who I had not met. And um, oh, I'm completely blanking on his name, but the guy who does Sesame Street in Saudi Arabia was there. So it was awesome to get to train with somebody who, like, not only is a professional puppeteer for Sesame Street, but is a professional puppeteer overseas somewhere else. Awesome. Yeah. So, really I'm sure, cool. I'm sure you know, puppeteers of all kinds are very interesting people. So it was really awesome just to, again, see people I've met and see people I have not met and just to see who's out there, you know? So, yeah, yeah it was cool. awesome. Those, those workshops are like finding a diamonds sometimes they're so rare to, to happen i know but, um it's amazing when you can actually get into one that's really awesome i know um, yeah that's that's congrats for just getting into it that's really cool Thank you. Um, <laughs> i was impressed myself too i was like I, I i guess when i first applied a few years ago i was just like again i was so young and naive and i was like i don't know if they're gonna like me but hopefully we'll see we'll see and I was lucky enough to get in, so I I don't I honestly don't take things like that for granted because it's just like it's it, like you said it's such a rare opportunity and yeah. yeah it's been awesome to I don't know that was a dream come true was to be able just to like do something with those guys it's been great yeah. and yeah I'm not at liberty to say anything official but um I, you never you never know what else could happen with that famous street next year so we'll see yeah yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's so cool. I know. <laughs> so cool. Um, I got to I got to visit the set last month. Um, oh yeah. 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 I think I saw some pictures of that. Yeah, that was that was my big thing. That was so cool. I don't remember a lot of it, honestly, from when I was a kid. So there was a lot I was just kinda like, I remember the steps and I remember Oscar's trash can. <laughs> 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 That's about all I remember. <laughs> um, yeah, they really, like updated the set too a couple of years ago. They yeah. like really revamped the whole thing. It's like it's it's like more colorful now too, and yeah, yeah, it's bright. really cool. Because I remember when I was younger watching Sesame Street, and like it actually looked like a grimy New York street kind of. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, oh no, this is a happy magical place of New York. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It, it's really awesome. I I really liked it. Um, uh, yeah, Marty was dragging me all over the set. He was like, this is where this happens, and this is where this happens, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> that, was, that was Peter Lentz for me, because I've, I've been really lucky to have some awesome conversations with Peter Lentz, and he was the exact same way, especially and when my sister was there, too. He was like, hey, let me come over here and show you this part of the set. And we were just like, well, this is stuff we used to watch from our childhood. This is crazy. Yeah. And, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you had the same experience as me, but what I found was, you know, just the people, 
the puppeteers, because I got to spend a good amount of time with them, they're all like such welcoming people, as puppeteers normally are. And yeah. very easy to talk to. You mm -hmm. know, they're always I think they always like know fresh talent when they see it, but they're always like, Oh hey, you're you're one of us. Come schmooze with us. So <laughs> yeah. I I personally had a great time with them. Yeah, I, I love them all. They're so fun. Um, when I was first getting into puppetry more, um, I I didn't know anyone at all in the puppet community. I didn't know anything about the puppet community or anything. And then I went to a uh, I went to a puppet festival and I went to a couple workshops and I was like these are like the nicest people I have ever met in my life. <laughs> I know. I know. They're so stinking nice. Like, who are these people? <laughs> I, I know. They're super nice people. Yeah. I it's so by that funny. example, too. I like, like every day. I'm like, I'm hoping I'm coming off as nice and welcoming as the people that I come across. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I feel the same way sometimes. It's like, wow. Yeah. They're so stinking nice. <laughs> Oh man. So, um, well, this brings us to the big question. Rachel, this is, this is the deep one. Yes. Are you ready? Are you ready for this one, Rachel? I think so. I'm plotting, even though I don't know what I'm plotting for yet. Okay. <laughs> the big question, it, it sounds so small, but the big question is why puppetry? Well, that is the big question, isn't it? It is. It totally is. <laughs> And you know what is so funny, out of so many questions I get asked about puppeteering, that's actually one of the easiest questions to answer. Um, and I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you the story. I mean, we have time, I guess. Um, I mean, when I was growing up, um, I mean, I've always liked puppets, even like when I was like really little, because I mean, I watched Sesame Street, of course, like most children did. And um, I remember when The Muppet Show used to be shown on Nickelodeon and my mom would like record it on VHS. Remember VHS kids? Remember when we record things on VHS? Um, so my mom would record VHS um, episodes of The Muppets and we'd watch that and I just love it. And I watched the movies like Muppet Christmas Carol. I like watch every single Christmas. And um, so I've always had a great appreciation for puppetry. Oh, and of course I went to puppet shows as a kid too, like regularly, because there was a puppet theater in Seattle where I grew up. and. Uh, what really got me into the idea of doing puppetry, though, was seeing Avenue Q when I was in high school. Because uh, for anyone who does not know out there, Avenue Q is a Broadway show, originally a Broadway show, that involves actors performing with puppets on stage, with other puppets and also with other normal human actors. And I feel like there was something inside me that just kind of was like, oh my god, I get it. I just like get puppetry now. Like I get why puppetry is amazing. It's like this illusion. Cause I mean, if you watch Avenue Q, yes, there's a performer with a puppet, like in plain sight, like they're not even covered in like complete black. Like you can see their faces and everything. Yeah, they're right there in front of you. Yeah, but you get completely lost in the fact that it's a character and it doesn't matter that there's two beings technically, it's still one character and you get still lost in the emotion and the story and just everything, it doesn't matter. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. And I was like, dude, I wanna do something like that someday. I wanna like, just, I love the idea of taking something that's inanimate and just creating the illusion that it has life. Cause that's essentially what puppetry is. But I just think that that's such a cool illusion. Like there's a lot of cool ways of doing illusion out there. You know, there's like magicians and illusionists, but this is like, I think what I liked about it was that it's um, there's so many different ways to go about it. Like you can do kids theater, you can do kids TV shows, you can do live shows, and and there's not just one type of puppetry. There's so many different kinds of strands too out there. And I guess what you know, again, jumping ahead a little bit, you know, I was interested in high school and I experimented when I was in college for a little while. Um, but then after a while, I was like. I don't know what I would do with this just because I was in college and I was like, okay, I need to focus on my studies. I need to focus on getting that degree that my parents are paying so much money for. And then after moving to LA, I was kind of in this like funk of like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I was working in a casting office for like two years. And then just like, honestly, when I think the new Muppets movie came out with Jason Segel, it just made me realize how much I miss puppetry and how much, you know, I think if, if that movie wasn't as good as it was, I don't know if I would have had that realization because it really is like 
again, so much emotion is behind that. And I just realized like, yeah, this is what puppets do, man. Like puppets can make you feel things even though you know they're not real. And so long story short, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just dedicate myself to this from now on because, you know, at least this is one little venture that I'm going to just focus more on because this is something I have to do. So, and uh, from there, I started taking classes with Michael Earl um, and made friends through friends through friends and and the rest is history, basically. <laughs> nice. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I understand the, the part about seeing the new Muppet movie and being like, oh, that's like, Oh yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> and and remembering, you know, oh, this is a thing that people do, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I think that's something that um, that kind of made me look into puppetry a little bit more, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, a, a similar effects. I think, um, um, yeah. I think that movie also just kind of like created more fans, really. It got more people oh, yeah. like, oh yeah, the Muppets are a thing. That's cool. And, and the story was so good and the characters were great. And it's just, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's pretty cool to think that that's what started it off for me. And now I actually am, I can actually call Peter Lentz a friend, you know, because he did Walter. And it's, <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's weird. Your life takes you sometimes from like a start of something to like where you are currently are. It's like, whoa, I didn't see that ever happening, but it happened. Yeah, I remember. Um, uh, I well, I met Peter Lynn at a at a workshop in Texas, and uh, and I remember um, emailing him afterwards. Um, uh, and I remember looking at my friend at work and going, I just emailed Peter Lynn. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> and and that whole thing it was it was really really funny, um, and they were like, I, I got, yeah, I've gotten a lot of emails like that, or even just like I just yeah. got a phone call from that person. Yeah, what? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then your friends go, who is that? Like, <laughs> like you don't understand, okay? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. so awesome. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. I love what you said about there being a lot of different um, strands of puppetry, too. There's there's so many different types. There, I mean, it's not just TV puppetry. There's, there's so much more you can do with puppetry that it's almost infinite, I think. Um. <laughs> totally. And there's so many things that I want to experiment more with. I mean, I guess I, I feel like I have the most experience and the most, the better, best eye for, you know, like hand style puppetry, like Sesame Street and the Muppets and that kind of stuff. Cause that's what really got me into it. But I've also kind of by accident gotten involved with doing marionettes. Cause I work at a nightclub like a bunch of times a month puppeteering marionettes. And that didn't happen until I got that job. So it was like, all right, I got to learn this now. So I, I learned it and I just, I've been working ever since. And there really is no, this is what, you know, this is one thing I really love about working at Swazzle is that there really is no better way to practice than to do it in front of an audience, mm -hmm. you know? So even if I mess up, you know, most of the time they don't even know. So <laughs> it's just, a, I think that I, because I get the chance to work in front of people so much, both in doing stuff with Swazzle and also working at a club where I get to work with marionettes in front of people all the time, it just, I really think it boosts your confidence, but it gives you a chance to just experiment and just have fun with it. And no one can say, you know, like, you do you, a terrible job. It's like, oh, how would you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, don't know. you don't know. I mean, yes, I am, but shut up. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, there's like no one who like says like, oh, that was terrible. So it's, I don't know. It, like I said, I think it just kind of helps boost your confidence and helps you realize, you know, you're more capable of doing stuff than you think. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, getting in front of an audience is great. A lot of times, um, I know for some people and myself, it's like it's kind of hard to like if you're not in an area that has a lot of puppet stuff going on. Sometimes it's hard to to get in front of an audience or even get an audience at all. But um, uh, YouTube is great for that, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
I need um, to do more puppet stuff on YouTube. That's one thing I keep telling myself about my channel. It's like, you know, you're kind of a puppeteer. Maybe you should like do something with that in your channel. I mean, come on, Rachel. <laughs> So yeah. you're, like, you're like already like a step ahead of me in that department. <laughs> I try to, oh man. It, and even that sometimes it's hard because then you have to come up with something new. Mm -hmm. You have to come up with something that's original because you can't really, you know, copyright stuff is annoying. It is. <laughs> I, I know. I review movies. I mean, it's both a really good thing and a really annoying thing all at the same time. And, and so, um, yeah, so that can sometimes be hard, but. I mean, once you, I mean, I put up a video of my monkey trying to get cookies off of the counter in the kitchen, and that was, <laughs> that, I mean, people thought it was funny, and it was original, and all it was was her just trying to get the cookies and not being able to for, like, yeah. <laughs> okay. You're experimenting, and also I think people right. like puppets, and what's great about puppets, too, is that that's something that I think people are not really used to, but at the same time, most people really like it. You know, it's, I think it was Jim Henson who said he didn't really bother to learn ventriloquy because, or ventriloquism or whatever it's called, because he knew people were looking at Kermit. They weren't looking at him. <laughs> Whenever he talked with Kermit, like in front of people. And it's just like, that's kind of what it is. People just like see puppets and like, that's what they do and that's what they watch and it's, like, like you're saying, people seem to really like the monkey thing, even though it's just a monkey. It's like, well, to them, it's really new because they haven't seen that yet. Right, yeah. And and it's like, well, like you were saying with Avenue Q, you just, I mean, they're not ventriloquists. They don't try to hide the fact that their lips are moving, but they... Exactly. It looks great. I mean, you just look at the puppet, and it's amazing. Yep. <sighs> so awesome. Um, wow, such good stuff. This is so cool. <laughs> um, let's see. I have other questions, and I'm finding them right now. Let's look at them. Um, who are um, who are some of your puppetry heroes? I know we talked about some of them, but maybe somebody that we haven't mentioned. Um, any puppetry people that you look up to in the like, anyone specific that I look up to? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's funny because when I think that I'm like Jim Henson is the first one that comes to mind, but I feel like I don't know. Ever since I've been like teaching puppetry to myself and learning, I've kind of been watching everybody almost that I can get my hand like any like clips on YouTube or anything I can get my hands on, and any puppeteers I come across, I'm always like asking them questions. I don't know, like to come to mind, I mean, Stephanie DeBruzzo, Leslie Carrera, cause like those are women, of course, in the yeah. puppetry community and they're awesome and doing it and leaving, living the dream. But I mean, Peter Lentz also, I think just because he's been such a big inspiration and you know, he was Walter and he just has this great, you know, just Peter in general is, I don't know, maybe he does this by force or maybe he doesn't, I've never asked him, but he like is like the nicest person in the entire world and is very, open and welcoming and I just feel like someone like him it and the reason I'm saying this is because it's not just him but it comes through in his puppetry is that he really does have this very soft-spoken personality and I think I just really admire him for being able to translate that and to make that work so well with puppets I mean being nice with puppets is a given but still I just see so much of his characters in himself and so much of himself mm -hmm. in his characters and I don't know there's just something very endearing about the way he goes about you know his presentation. So I guess, I guess, yeah, like Peter was a great, um, great inspiration. And um, I, I have a great respect for people who also don't, who, um, who don't have like a big puppetry background, but also were just kind of able to pick it up and just kind of make it work. Like people like Matt Vogel, who I don't, I don't, I, I could, you know, I could be wrong, but I don't think he really did anything with puppetry until he got the job as Big Bird. And huh. I, I think as Big Bird's understudy, and he like again like you would never have guessed like watching him do his all of his work and all of his characters, and he's just great at what he does. Um, yeah. yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah, my favorite, I don't... yeah anybody who's worked so frequently, you know, past and present, um, just like in the Muppets and um, and Sesame Street, because I think that those are like the dreams for me. It's like I want to be where you are someday soon. Yeah. So, 
So really anybody, but like, I guess to name the top, I guess the ones that I just named for you. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. For me, yeah, Peter is, um, yeah, Peter's awesome. Yes. Love yes. You, Peter. We love yeah. you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure I send this to him. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hi, Peter. <laughs> Hi, we love you, Peter. <laughs> um, uh, what are, well, I guess we, we kind of already talked about this, but specifically, we can get into more specific with this. What are your professional goals and how are you moving toward them specifically? Yeah, I mean, I'm still trying to figure that out, but I mean, Here's the thing is, whenever I feel like I have an ultimate goal in mind, I feel like something comes along where I'm like, ooh, I wanna try that and see what happens with that. Like for example, um, you know, when I was lost and didn't know what I was doing in LA, I finally found puppetry and I was like, ooh, I wanna do this. But then when I started experimenting with puppeteering and thinking like, yeah, the end goal is like working with Sesame Street, then I realized that I really enjoyed working with voice work. And I was like, ooh, I'm gonna do voiceover now too. So I moved into doing that and I, uh, and then after that, after a while it was like, okay, I'm gonna do these Muppet videos now. And then it was like, ooh, this is cool too. I wanna do something with this. So that's such a weird question to answer because I mean, I guess if I had to put it into simple terms, definitely to work on Sesame Street, even if it's brief, I think like I just wanna, I, 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 do, I wanna put my part into that. I mean, um, I think what I've always liked about children's um, about children's television, especially like with Sesame Street, is that you're making a difference in the world, and you are educating people. And that's what I also love about working with Swazzle because our shows, like, you know, they're they teach good values. And I really feel like, you know, just not to sound cliche, but the children are our future. And I remember when I was younger and seeing shows like that, and it made me really happy and it did impart some wisdom on me and it also made some amazing memories and I just really want to be a part of that. So I feel like the end goal, you know, besides like, ooh, to work on Sesame Street or oh, to get like an animated series, the end goal is more to just, I think is more to die happy knowing that I made a difference in the world. I think that's more the end goal. That's kind of what I love about YouTube too, is like I don't do anything I do for fame or attention. I do it because I love sharing what is right to me and I love sharing opinions and I love hearing opinions like that's what I like I like I really like listening to people talk about things that they're interested in or talk about movies or anything in general like I just love hearing people who are passionate and I was like yeah I like talking about things that are important to me too so yeah I guess and I, I like to think that the passion I have for everything that you know that energy goes into the things that I love and you know where these things are going to take me so I, I, I don't know other than, like I said, I hope I make a difference in the world. Like that, I, whether it's big or small, like you never know where these things could lead to. I'm sure Jim Henson had no idea he was gonna make as much of a difference as he did. But I just, I feel like I just wanna be on my deathbed and feel like I did what I set out to do, <laughs> to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. Oh man, so much good stuff. I, I thought of things to say while you were talking and then okay. totally oh. lost them again. <laughs> I'm sorry if I talked too much. No, 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 absolutely not. No, it's great. No, I, I relate to a lot of what you said. Like, um, yeah, like, you know, one day wanting to be on Sesame Street, you know, at least for a little while, you know, that would just be amazing. Um, I mean, if they were like, hey, we want you to play this regular character, I'd be like, sold? Yes. But, you know, at the same time, I'm like, dude, I'm happy just to come on for a day and be an assistant. Like, yeah. I know that I was a part of something I'll really. Be a butterfly. Good. I'll be a butterfly for a while. Yeah, I'll be a butterfly. I'll be <laughs> in the background. I'm cool with whatever. I just want to be a part of something that makes a big difference. Like, that's what's important to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. I think there's a lot of stuff that. Um, uh, you're talking about like because it, it teaches the it teaches kids about you know kindness and everything that I think that's super important um, and I think there's a lot of things at least for me in my childhood that was like I don't particularly like remember it remember learning this thing from 
a TV show or from a book or whatever that I read. Um, but I'll, I'll look back at it. I'll be like, where did I get this concept from? Where did I get this idea mm -hmm. from? And then I go, oh, I read this in Chronicles of Narnia when I was like 12. And I learned this like right. spiritual thing. And I was like, oh, but that wasn't like like a lesson or anything that I particularly learned. It was just this idea that was implanted in my head because mm -hmm. I read the book or because I watched Mr. Rogers or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it really is like, I think something I've learned over time mm -hmm. is that there's a big psychology to our media. You know, there's a reason why films are made the way they are. There's a reason why there's certain lessons put in, you know, certain books and certain TV shows and like all these undertones that we're completely not aware of. It's like, and again, it's just all these weird, clever ways to just get you to learn things. And again, that's why I like talking about movies, because again, there is a psychology to why we care about something or why we don't care about something. You know, I mean, obviously certain things speak better to other kinds of people, but there's a reason why Citizen Kane is considered one of the best films ever. You know, it's like because of the aesthetic and like how it was presented to us and how it, the story was told. Like there's so much behind all of that, just layers and layers and layers. And I've always found that so interesting. Yeah, yeah, and um, the, um, yeah, it's, it's very powerful. The, and I've, I've explained, um, I've described puppetry before as, as um, being a whole bunch of different art forms all put into one fuzzy little box. And, yes. <laughs> but there's a, a, it's a very powerful fuzzy little box because, mm -hmm. um, you can do so much with it, and and um, and it, yeah, art itself, uh, any art form is powerful. But I think um, uh, especially puppetry can be um, extremely powerful. Um, yeah, it is. And I think um, what I also like about puppetry is that it's very collaborative, and a lot of art forms are. You know, theater is collaborative, mm -hmm. film is collaborative, a lot of things are, but I think what I also like about it is, you know, that's what I also like about working at Swazzle, is that, you know, we write stuff together, and then we edit things together, and then we also perform together. And, I mean, those shows I do by myself, but I also get direction, and when you're on set, and when you get the chance to do stuff with other people, like, there's just something magical that happens with that, too, especially what I like about puppeteering is that you're actually performing live and, you know, as opposed to like, you can't really, you know, interview Elsa from Frozen too well, but you can interview Kermit because he's actually there. Yeah. You know? like that's like, Exactly. And like when I do shows too, I get to bring a character out and like have them say hi to kids and everything. And like, there's just something really magical about that. And, and kids love it when they get to talk to the character from the show. Oh, they, They're they like, oh, sick. And I think it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. I did um, I did puppet shows um, at my church for um, about uh, when I was living in Pensacola. I did that for about nine years, almost That's ten. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I mean, I did different things. And I that's where I first learned. Um, that's when I really learned puppetry is is at my church. And then um, uh, yeah, every once in a while we bring them out for the kids to see and they were like, oh, it's so, so, oh my goodness. And they, they, we were rock stars and it was awesome. <laughs> it always makes me really happy. Like not just like, you know, kids like to touch the puppets because they're like, oh, it's real, is it? But what makes you really happy is when they want to give puppets a hug because then you know for a fact that you did something and really yeah. impacted something on them. It's just like, yes, yes I did my job. <laughs> <laughs> they want to give it a high five. They want to. Yeah, exactly. All that good stuff. Yep. Put their fingers in its mouth. Yeah, they oh, always want to do that. Every day. Every yep. day. <laughs> <laughs> when they get to, when I bring it, when I'm able to bring them out to like talk to the kids every day, someone wants to put their finger in its mouth. <laughs> of course. Of course. That's so Because they're kids. <laughs> That's what kids do. <laughs> well, um, speaking of uh, interviewing puppets, um, it's about that time. Do you have some puppet characters? Some I, um, you know, she actually asked me about this before. So I don't have too many puppets, but I do have one that I can bring out and I can try. I haven't used her in a while, but I can try to revive her a little bit. That's okay. I have 
I have a couple down here. Okay. Um, they could be very experimental. Okay, all right. I'm gonna get, um, let's see. Oh, oh, you have a little blue monster character. I have a little blue monster character. Who's that person? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Who is that? Oh! Oh my gosh, she, she's like a little me. She's so cute. Hi. Hello. Hi. My name's Edo. Hi, Edo. I'm Zick. Zick? Zick. Z I I Zick. Mm. Hi. 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 Um, um, let me ask you a question, okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Zick? 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 Are you? Zick. Okay, hi. Um, uh, you do have questions. Okay. Zick, what is your, hold on. What are your professional goals and how are you moving toward them? What, 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 oh, my professional goals? Yes, yours, Zick. Hmm. Um, right now my professional goal is to, um, to make more space in the box that this one keeps me in. Uh, uh, but in, but in, all, in all seriousness, I think, um, I think that my goal is to, um, to make people happy. Aww, I, I really love, I, I love, the, I love when the children, they, they want to make me happy. I'm so, I'm so used to working with a monitor. It's interesting because I'm looking at this like it's a mirror and it's like hard <laughs> to see that. Oh, boy, I. But, yeah. Yeah. But, but anyway, it's my turn to talk now. Um, uh, but I, I love to make the children happy, and um, I, I hope one day they look back and they, um, they, um, they're like, oh, that blue thing. Um, yeah, she made me happy. Aw, that's so nice. That's yeah, so just... sweet. So nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I have another question. Mm -hmm. um, does Zick, do you have a cupcake? Do I have a cupcake? Yes, you have cupcake. I don't think so. Do, do you have a cupcake? No. No cupcake? No, I'm sorry. I don't have a cupcake here. No cupcake. I, I could maybe walk down the street and get one, but um, it no might take a while. No cupcake? No, no sorry. No cupcake. Okay, bye. See ya. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she was adorable. <laughs> He's uh, kind of obsessed with cupcakes, unfortunately. Oh. Um, Anyway, uh, oh. let's see. I have another. Let me grab another one. <laughs> I was talking about the monkey earlier, so I'll bring her up. Oh, a monkey. Yes. All of my voices sound kind of the same, unfortunately. Oops. Oh, yikes. What was that? Um, that was the rod arm <laughs> hitting the desk. <laughs> okay. Hi! Oh, hello, little monkey! You're Look. so adorable! Oh, thank you! Yeah. I'm so crooked! Hi. I did I get crooked? How'd this happen? Something happened to my face. You were you talking really about... You were talking about the, um... The box that you live in? Mm, yes, it's a, it's a big, clear box. It's like, I can see the world around me, but I can't get out. It's like torture. I understand. I live in a bag. Oh. In a duffel bag. Oh. It's terrible. Yes. It's terrible because because um you see I um oh my name is Baby Banana. Oh hi Baby Banana. Baby Banana. Yes. I'm I'm yellow like I'm yellow and brown like a banana. That's fine. Mm. And um oh, thank you. And um so yes, I'm I'm five years old. And um, I like to do um, performances for for kids. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, me, too, me too. Me too. I love the performing for the kids. Yeah, it's really fun. I like to sing songs with them. It's really fun. Um, I used to have a guitar that I would play, but I don't have it anymore. So oh, no, what happened to it? Um, I think I had to leave it behind when we moved or something. Oh no, that's the saddest yeah. thing. Yeah, that's okay. It was just made out of cardboard, so I can just make another one. <laughs> oh, okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do the puppet laugh together. We're gonna do the puppet laugh. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Right? <laughs> 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 
Um, <laughs> this is so crazy. Anyway, um, 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 let's see. What else can we talk about? Hmm. You ever have to comb your your fur? No, my my my, my fur is pretty pretty nice and uh, short. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be combed. I used to. <gasps> I got a feather. What? I don't have my bow. Oh, you have a bow? I have a. I usually do. Oh, well, where is it? It's not in the bag. I don't know where it is. Oh, oh no. hold on! I'm gonna get my bow in my hair. Hold on. Okay. okay. Well, she's getting my bow. She's getting my bow. Put my bow in my hair. It looks like a flower. Yeah, it's a little flower thing. Oh, it's so cute. You got, you, you got your I flower used to wear a dress too, but um, it was itchy, so I don't wear the dress. Yeah. Well, you got it's your flower, flower, and I have my feather. I love your feather. Is it is it a uh, natural? I'll is never it a natural tell. feather? I'll never tell. <laughs> ah, that's funny. No, thank you. You're funny too. Yeah, I love it. I like your feather. Do you ever put a bow on your feather? Um, I haven't yet, but I could try that. You should try putting. Oh my goodness, you're human. Your human has a hat. Oh, she does. It's, yeah. it's green. It's a Kermit hat. Pretty hat. Oh my god, it's a Kermit. Love that one. That's my yeah. hat. My hat is that. No, it's my hat. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know if I could wear this hat. I feel like it would it would probably cover my whole face, and that's not very practical. No, it's not practical, but it's really fun. <laughs> I like you. Yeah, I have a, a video on on here somewhere on YouTube that is um me just trying on hats, and I was trying on different hats, and some of them went over my eyes and over my ears. Were they, were, they, were they human hats? They were human hats, weren't they? Yeah, they were human hats. And one of them was a scarf that I just wrapped around my head. Wow. But, and that was the Kermit hat. And that was my favorite one. I love it. Humans, yeah. though, they make things that are way too big. Like, nothing fits me. That's why I'm, that's why I'm kind of naked. Yeah. That's too bad. You should find... Sometimes we wear... Um, uh, well, I can't wear them. But my friend Gloria, she's another puppet. She's down there. She wears um, infant size. Mm hmm Yeah, she wears little baby clothes. Yeah, yeah. Some some people are cool with that, but I was like, you know what? Um, if it's not adult clothes, then I'll be naked. <laughs> I'm fine with it. Yeah, it's okay. Mm. Yeah, I I like I like my fur. I like your fur too. Yes, it's very fun. Anyway, what else are we going to talk about, Sick? Mm -hmm. I talk about clouds. I like clouds. You like clouds? Clouds are very pretty. I saw some clouds in the sky today that said La La Land on them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think they're made by, by planes. Yeah, I think they're made by planes, but it, it caught me off guard. I was like, La La Land. Huh. Suddenly, I want to go see the movie. I wonder why. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a movie. I being a five year old monkey, I do not keep up with um a lot of you know, new stuff. You know what I mean? But do you play with the, the apps on the iPad? The kids love that stuff. No. I live in a bag. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Mm. I don't I don't play games. No. I live in a bag. But we live um in bad lives, don't we? <laughs> It's a rough life, let me tell you. Oh yeah. Oh I know. Yeah. Well, okay. um um it's about ten o'clock. Well it's oh ten o'clock here. It's Over there, 10 o'clock for you. But it's ten o'clock here. Um, Miss Rachel. Mm. Yeah, yes. Can I talk to you for a second? Yes. Um 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 oh I was gonna say something. And I forgot what oh oh tell tell the people where they can find you online, please. Okay, okay, um, sure. Um, you can find me, um, if you go to Twitter, it's uh, Adorkable Rach is my username. And um, just R-A-C-H, Adorkable Rach, because unfortunately Adorkable Rachel's taken. Um, 
but also Facebook, same thing, um, facebook.com slash Rachel. And if you want to watch my YouTube content, uh, youtube.com slash Rachel. And just FYI, for anyone who doesn't know, my name is spelled R-A-C-H-E-L, not A-E-L. There's no extra A. So awesome. have, fun. have fun. Come check us out over on the YouTubes. Yeah. I love and, stuff. That's um, to me. We'll put the links. We'll put the links in the description. Down Yay! There. So people can just click. They don't have to like spell it all out. But it's it's good to have it, you know, spelled out for them. Just in case yeah. somebody wants to do it the hard way. Some people like to do it the hard way. Yeah. Anyway, okay. thank you so much. I'm gonna go down here. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> bye, bye, banana. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. Um. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I, I gotta get down too. But uh. Oh, okay. Nice yeah. talking to you, Jen. Thanks, Sick. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Absolutely. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Oh, this was this was totally fun. Um, I'm gonna stop the broadcast. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And um, yes, subscribe for more videos later on. <laughs> Come subscribe to both of us.